Hi, today is August 10th, 2018, and I have been giving a talk at uh, Tesla Tech Conference Extraordinary Technologies. And after the uh, events, there was a so-called social place where people meet and eat. And uh, I met Russell Anderson, and uh, I, I was very charmed and fascinated to meet him. He is a very relaxed and very recognizable type, which I would say it's it's an alien type, more like a, a soul which was incarnated, but it, it still ha he still has that energy which is very recognizable. I would say it's a Pleiadian, but I can't say for sure. But it, uh, I started the recording only uh, some time into the conversation because I, I wasn't sure he would approve it and I didn't want to interrupt him. But uh, so, uh, I mean, and then it goes and goes and goes. Sometimes it goes into a non-interesting topic, but then comes back to very interesting topic. So, I, uh, I will just uh, plug in the recording and you can scroll to interesting parts of it. And uh, unfortunately, it's just too much work to cut, and, uh, to cut uh, out the pieces which are most interesting. So, I will just paste it as it is. So, here we go. It's better than real life. But anyway, um it stopped a mirror and it had a uh, upper left hand corner a green light which was steady lower right hand corner a red light that blinked and this red light could detach and fly around on its own and these lights were not your normal aircraft gel colors they were like pure absolutely mm. pure like monochromatic laser light they didn't, they didn't blink on and off either. Well, the red light did. Oh, yeah? The red one did. It could detach. It could blink. And then before it could detach, it started blinking. And it would not fly in a linear fashion. It would, like, appear in different places in the sky. Mm. Like this, like this, like this. You know, like as if it was, had no inertia at all. And I'm like, why am I seeing this? You know? And my and I said, Mom, look at this. Look at what I'm seeing. She saw it too. Mm. And uh, I, I had a camera up. Uh, people who we were still filming the Super 8 back in 1981. I had a Super 8 camera already loaded up with film right on the you know the shelf where I was. So I grabbed my Super 8 camera. It was a Sankyo Supertronic uh, Super 8 camera, one of the last great Super 8 cameras before they switched over to video. Mm -hmm. And I started filming this thing. I filmed it. And uh, the red light, you know, like I said, could de detach and fly around on its own, but in a non-linear fashion. It would appear and disappear in different places in the sky, then it would link back up with the main body of this big white light. And it would move around slightly here, like there, and then come back and then move around a little bit, and then, but that red light. Now, I get the film back from the developer. Of course, I don't see any stars, because you can't photograph stars at night, they don't show up. <clears throat> Same, same thing on the moon, same thing in outer space. The stars won't show up when you try to photograph them because they're not as sensitive as your eyes. You gotta do time exposures. So, um, so I get the film back from the developer and <clears throat> there it is, the big white light. And the red light only showed up a couple of times. And it was showing up, you know, attached to the big white light. And I'm like, oh my God. I have hard evidence. Mm hmm something the skeptics say you know you right. should always have right. and like my friend who I grew up with I grew up with Neil deGrasse Tyson we lived in the same apartment complex really? in the Bronx <laughs> Skyview Apartments in the Bronx overlooking the Hudson River in Riverdale Bronx he was two years older than I am and uh, our families were good friends Neil Tyson Neil, Neil deGrasse no. Tyson <clears throat> but he chose to go a different way and he uh, you know I guess he signed some deal with the devil because he ridicules UFOs <laughs> oh, really? and aliens. Oh, yeah. Side. And, uh, you know, but <laughs> he, I... He went to the Carl Sagan type of... Uh... No, Carl Sagan wasn't like that at all. No? No, no Carl well, Sagan knew. Oh, yeah. Well, well, that's right. He wrote the remember? book Contact. Yes. He, of course. There you go. But Bingo. Was very early in his And the career. movie was very well done with Jodie Foster, I thought. Oh, it was great. I love it. It was and really classic, was, modern classic. That was classic. the last he ever talked about, though. <laughs> But, uh, no, I, the last time I saw him, I visited him at his office in the Hayden Planetarium, which I've been going all my life. It's my favorite planetarium in the country. <clears throat> better, much better than Griffith but in L.A. But anyway, um, you know, I gave him some of my anti-gravity stuff. I gave him a, a enlarged poster board that I'd done of a, a Hugo Gernsback uh, science and invention from like around 1903 or 4 or, 19, or even maybe 1912, as late as 1912, and it showed a sphere, said anti-gravitational sphere, 
it said uh, it was a sphere, a metallic sphere, and it had a, a grid system of wires all over it. It said this is controlled by electricity. You control anything in space. I'm like, whoa. And so I gave that to him because I thought, oh boy, this is, you know, this goes to show this, you know, this work mm -hmm. was, was mm -hmm. thought of way back in the day, mm -hmm. even before the early days of radio. Well, actually, the early days of wireless, you know, from uh, Marconi, who was using seven of Tesla's patents. <coughs> <laughs> and remember what Tesla said about uh, wireless. He said radios is simply like sound waves. He said it's simply like sound waves are compressions and rarefactions in the air. My radio are compressions and rarefactions in the ether. So he said radio is like sound waves. Now what came after, where he was sending those signals through the air and the earth at 17 times the speed of light, that was non-Hertzian. That was a result of shock discharge experiments, where the signals traveled superluminally. Uh, and he only okay. realized later... Okay, wait, wait a minute, back up. So, what he was, you said what he was doing later, mm -hmm. when he was doing... Prior to World War I. Okay, so this isn't, uh, oh. this isn't the wireless... Uh, no. This is something that came later. It wasn't part of the Colorado experience. No, no, it was, it was part of his uh, 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 Wall Street, not Wall Street, um, Houston Street, Houston Street Laboratory in Greenwich Village in New York. So what, so, I'm sorry, what kind of a wave was it? Well, it was a shock discharge that for some reason propagated ne nearly instantaneously instead of its sea like all EM transmissions through the ether. And there has to be an ether because that's the only way to transmit waves, transmit uh, information in the form of waves. A true definition of vacuum would be the inability to propagate energy in the form of waves. And nature abhors a vacuum as we know. Mm. Wow. Cool. Did Tesla have an assistant at that time? Like I think he did. Assistant he did had a uh, I'm pretty sure. Colorado Springs. He had to. He couldn't do all that work himself. <laughs> oh, he was getting on in years. By the time he got back to New York. But um, his work single handedly gave us our electrical twentieth century. And only now is starting to be surpassed. <laughs> We can look at the uh, new papers on spintronics and quantum tunneling. Now check, we know how. I'm check out that patent. Yeah, yo, yeah. January of yeah. this year. Of this, this year. We were expecting it, wow. and I was expecting it as soon as I. They said that the USPTO had allowed 32 of the 37 patent claims. Hmm. I'm like, ooh, we're in like Flint. I know. And and yeah, got that right. I mean, I have to. I have to admit, I honestly had, it's, had no it's, idea. It's epic making. It's, that, it's epic. That anti gravity technology had has actually proceeded to the point where where it is in your presentation. It was like, oh, okay, we're here. We can do all this. Of stuff. Of course we can. That's the whole point. And we've been able. That's to what do it my for younger decades. colleague Richard Dolan talks about all the time in the breakaway civilization stuff and alternative. I read about alternative three in the library, Yonkers Public Library in Scarsdale, New York, back in '73 or '74. I was like, oh, Mars colonies, Mars survival colonies yeah. for the for the elite, you know, yeah. with with uh, clandestine technology. You know, oh man. Yeah, and they're really. I did, that was before I even discovered the T.T. Brown and Searle stuff. Yeah, and, and when I did, there was no stopping. A researcher, right? you know, I mean, he he's he doesn't say anything that he can't back up eighty-five different ways. Yeah, because he's not part of the cabal or the uh, the high priesthood of scientifism, where well, they're they're fettered by calcified dogma and fed lies in their uh, graduate schools programs. Fed lies. How about that? Unbelievable. But yeah, true. it's just become very clear that there's there's. Our science and there's their science. And our science is, is not the down. science that is taught in the upper echelons right. of the military. Right. They it's teach the science that was embraced by Nikola Tesla. Right. His dynamic theory of gravity and the ether theory. Yeah, yeah. And it also shows you 
how teleportation works, how quantum tunneling works, how all kind of incredible things that we can't explain with conventional science work. But we're discovering that and it's being added to our knowledge in conventional science. Which is in great. In spite of them. In spite of it, exactly. You got that right. Oh yeah. But and it's an incredible time. Well and and the other the other part of that is that, that you know, it seems that it seems as though there there there's gonna reach a critical mass at some point of, of those who those who either suspect or know or you know, and so and at that Look point, what's going on in the media right now. Nobody's been doing anything about it. The media now is taking it seriously. No more ridicule, no more skeptics. And I've been seeing that on cable TV programs for the past nine or ten years. And it, it's, it's accelerated. Debunkers are nowhere to be found. It's like, here's the data, we're not alone, we've had this technology too for a long time. And that's it. Now, deal with it. <laughs> if you talk about the Tom DeLong thing, though, that's a, that's a different story because, mm. because that's okay, let's give them a crumb and see what they do. Right. You know, and it's right. so... Right, right. I mean, it's, it's either... It's either propaganda or it's so controlled that it's that it's um, I don't know which. It's the latter. It's the latter. It's control. Yes. It's not propaganda. No. It's 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 always been controlled. It's always been propaganda. <laughs> well, that too. But the control was always there in the background. It was. It remained very inscrutable and enigmatic. I'm sorry, what did you say? I was in Vegas, I saw mainstream news, I saw Hal Kudoff and Harry mm -hmm. Reid talking about UFO disclosure. Mm -hmm. Yep. The government. Yep, yep, yep. That's exactly what I'm talking how, about. What do you think yep. of it? Network news? Well, they're going to spin disclosure, but then... Tucker Carlson on, uh, they don't put out something. on uh, Fox News, Tucker Carlson, had on those guys too. Had Hector Alzano, had the other guy, had the guy from NASA, and, you know... So you, you And he said, was, he said, was, boy, I thought this stuff was all nonsense. I guess I was wrong. And I'm like, wow, I never thought I'd see that in my lifetime, yeah. along with the disclosure, although both were predicted. And the disclosure happened right on schedule, which is pretty predicted, amazing. Predicted by who? Um, various people on the internet, various insiders, I don't know how they knew, but since 2012 they've been saying that disclosure would be happening in 2017, in five years, and 2017 came. I, I've heard that, I've heard that. And it didn't times. happen until almost the end of and 2017. I don't remember where exactly where yeah, I heard it. Yeah, me first. too, i got to find the videos, but um, the disclosure started to happen and people didn't set their hair on fire, quit their jobs and run around like maniacs. So you can expect more and more disclosures in the present and the near future. Well, people didn't jump out of the windows? Exactly. They didn't jump out of the windows. But they didn't do what they did in 1938 for the Orson Welles Mercury right. Theater broadcast. Right. So humanity has been evolved so, to the point that we can accept the fact that we're not alone. They've got to start connecting the dots. Yes, they and they have are. They've got to start connecting the dots. Thanks to the internet. And it has to involve, you know, uh, But it might be energy. because of land Jesus in a spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that guy, that guy, the UFO Jesus. UFO Jesus, that guy with the long, you know, he well, looks like Jesus, they call him UFO Jesus. I think that's Discl the, the disclosure guy. The Vatican owns most of their telescopes. They, they know. The Vatican admitted that, you, that aliens are real. The Vatican oh, yeah. back they've, in 06, well, 07. They've, they've known that for thousands of years. And they're tracking Not thousands, them. because don't forget, they censored okay, and jailed. <laughs> no, remember what they did to Galileo? Remember? The red dwarf and they out. only, within the last couple of centuries, did they realize, oh, we can learn ab about God's heavens by getting into astronomy. And they became the best astronomers in all of science. The state-of-the-art meteorite laboratories and a uh, great observatory in Arizona. Oh, my gosh. They know that the... Uh, you know, of course they know I, we're not I, alone. I, have to say, I think it's maybe something like what you were saying, but, but when, I, when I first heard, heard about the Tom DeLong thing, you know, I thought, okay. It was on all the doing, mainstream news outlets. What they're doing is, is priming us for the, for the false flag alien. Bingo, right. bingo, that's coming. I agree, I agree with Steve Greer, that's definitely coming. Oh, you think coming. that's definitely coming? Oh, yeah. Okay, so without a doubt. See, see the, without a see doubt. this as a positive thing, even though it's, it's for the purpose of priming us for the false flag. Exactly. Priming us for the false flag. All right. Jesus Got that right. Jesus is coming into the spaceship. <laughs>
Well, and they've got you know, all that in. technology, and it's it's something they've been working Absolutely. on for decades. And, yeah. Prison yeah. Without prison. But now that they admit that UFOs are real, now the next thing people are going to ask, especially in the mainstream scientific community, is well, how do they fly? Okay. Where do they get their energy? Where do they get the energy? How can they make those fantastic accelerations and right angle turns at multi mock speeds? And then they're going to turn to us. Yeah. They're going to turn to the alternative energy and science community and say, well, you know, Thomas Townsend Brown, John Searle, Otis T. Carr, you That's know, right. Victor Schauberger, That's you know, right. the stuff that you see on cable TV and not in the mainstream. That's right. That's what I said to people from uh, that I saw when I was at the Global BEM in Holland. I said, if you have any doubt that we are in uh, an age of disclosure, just go on cable TV any night of the week and see that they're disclosing all this stuff. And now all those programs are obsolete because we are in disclosure since 20, uh, d December 20th, and with more to come. And you know, people are saying, okay, we're not alone. There are ET craft around, you know, next. <laughs> and, then, and the next thought is, okay, you know, we have humans have the technology. <laughs> And then that's going to be so transform, uh, more transformative than when uh, the wireless came in, when then uh, uh, household electricity, um, uh, household and industrial electricity, <clears throat> radio, radar, and the, for the military, and or nuclear energy and nuclear weaponry. It's going to be even more revolutionary than that. Just epical making, epic making, and the beginning of the new age and the much prophesied and ballyhooed age of Aquarius. First contact. Well, exactly. Then, the next, Bingo. But the next it had been has made clandestinely, be, not okay. in the open. Humans have to get your act together, and we have to stop blowing each other up. Bingo. I, you know, Bingo. So, and that's the really, really important guy. And that's what I believe is happening right now. You hit the nail right on the head. Do you think it's happening? Yes, but things are going to get a little worse before they get better, and the, but they will ultimately get better, way better. The, the cabal is humanity is going to be forced by by being mode. frightened into unifying. They're going to like that episode of the first series of the Outer Limits, which I grew up with. Um, God, I, I forget what it was called, where they they manufacture an alien to scare the the nations of the earth into cooperating, and. Uh, Things don't go exactly as planned, but uh, it was like, you know, all those stories are like morality plays, like Star the, Trek. Yeah. Of the cookbook, the Twilight Zone. Exactly. Yeah, what do you think book? about all that, uh, some of this directed energy? Mm. 9-11. I saw Dr. Judy Wood's presentation when I was at the Global BEM in Holland. They were probably using a gravitonics beam device, a uh, G beam device. They have a program called Solar Warden. There's four big giant stations yep. armed. Yep. All through the, through the whole solar system. system. Yep. Oh yeah. Solar yeah, Warden. So the taxpayers, like I said, the tax the taxpayers. What's criminal? The taxpayers are being asked to foot this technology twice. But they don't know. Once in secret and once in public. $23 trillion, thank you. <laughs> and meanwhile, we have people starving, you know, and, and we don't have health care, we don't have, you know, free education. But they got all of that in Europe, you know, you don't even have to tip people in Europe. Was like, that that's, found out that's, one, be, yeah. that's the part of the puzzle that, that, that really, it was like maybe the final part of the puzzle when I heard, when I heard about it's that. It's like, yeah, what's wrong, what's wrong with Americans? Well, what's wrong with Americans is that they abdicated their power to people who don't have their best interest in heart. It's supposed to be government of, by, and for the people, not the secret military, you know, un, uh, illegal, illegal secret government. Yeah. And it is illegal, so all the security yours are illegal too. That's why we're having such disclosure right now. It's, it's unraveling. Yeah, I it's, got that right. It's unraveling. It and, is. And the, and the it is. The is lies are unraveling. There, there are, there are dangerous dangerous animals that are backed into a corner yep. and are acting out of desperation and that that little part of it is, is a little bit scary you know especially when it's scary trying for to, them trying to incite it's a, only going to be scary for them not for us war. well i think it's pretty i think it's i mean what they're still doing with the mass media though is 
is pretty freaking scary. Well, don't forget, they're controlled. All the media outlets, I realized, when they were reading all from the same scripts, and they're like, they got caught doing it, you know, they're all controlled. They're all part of the problem. They're all going to be taken down. We all know that it's laughable, but there's still maybe a portion of the population that's still still entrained no, no. to believe it all. They're so, still under the mind control. They still have the veil over their eyes, and they haven't woken up yet. It's like the Matrix. So you know, if, just you know, it's like it's like these two arts. Okay. Where are those arts going to be? And, and you know, is there? Oh yeah. There, there has to not be a civil war before we get there. And, yeah. Well, let's hope not. Yeah. yeah. That's so people, you know, don't act to, along their baser instincts. I hope they just come to their senses and, and wake up in a positive manner. And something tells me I think they will. I don't know how I know this, but <laughs> let's hope you know, that the saner heads will prevail. Cooler yeah, heads. I, I agree with you 100%. Um, I don't think it's going to be a, a smooth road, though. It never is. Yeah. Every change and, from one um, age you know, to another is always it's filled with turmoil. We don't really know what that part of it is. We don't really know. But, <laughs> Just, now, you know, incredible gyrations in society and even yeah. in the uh, air and water and land yeah. always precede every new age. Hi. Hi, Glenn. I first saw you, Glenn, in 1990 in Colorado Springs. Yeah, and that's where Paul Brown was. I still have his thing in the new cell, the, 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 ball, the battery, the radioactive battery. I mean, I look, I look like I'm... <laughs> well, so do I. Where'd my hair go? <laughs> and my hair, my, I'm, my beard is all white now. What the heck? That's part of the Yeah, Paul Brown was a Yeah, along with the glasses. Yeah, Paul Brown was a genius. And I believe that he was most... Yeah. Yeah. But I believe he was taken out. I believe he was murdered. Anytime there's a mysterious car accident with no explanation. It was a drag race. It makes me think of John John Kennedy, who was a year older than I, and you know the way he died, and the way a lot of the Kennedys died. You know. Yep. Nine yards. It's just they, they took too many risks and put themselves, they thought they were immortal, and put themselves in too many dangerous situations. And if they didn't do that, they would still be alive today. Uh, I see the end in sight. Are you talking about John Jr.? Yeah, John John. Well, I you know, think that's he's still alive. Wow. Why would he disappear? Very mysterious. And his wife, too. Who was on the plane, too. Very mysterious. Hey, gang. Hey, honey. Where you been all this? Where you been all my life? I was in the cabane. I was with a Oh, okay. So I got distracted. Uh, on the seventh floor. <laughs> 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 Lucky <laughs> seven floors, seven chakras. Hey, what? <laughs> what synchronicity? 33 parallel. Whoa. <laughs> How about the 38th parallel? It's funny thing about the 37th parallel. You go across the whole United States, there's a huge concentration of UFO sightings. I witnessed a UFO, spectacular daytime UFO yes, sighting, my only daytime UFO sighting with my wife as we were walking to the, uh, we're in our hometown, walking to the grocery store. Was that with Stephen Greer? What's that? Was that with Stephen Greer? No, it was with my wife. Not even, was it both of them? No, just me and my wife walking, we're in our hometown, yeah, walking from the apartment to the grocery store to get some food. <laughs> yeah, I saw one with me and myself. Been there, been there, done that too. In dreams and reality, unbelievable. It's like it's something that's meant to be. It's weird. Yep. 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 It was very bizarre. When I uh, hung out with people in 1991 and 92, friends that I met 
in Colorado Springs, I heard stories that were not on the news media about giant, gigantic, like I had in my dreams, giant, a single giant UFO hovering over Colorado Springs. And then you know how they have Pikes Peak right there? And you go up, they, people went up Pikes Peak and they saw on top of the UFO. And it was like a typical UFO, um, you know, it's round, um, slightly flat on the top, like you see like in Close, close Encounters. It was, they said it was huge. They said there's no way anybody could miss it. And, but it wasn't reported on the news. And so they were looking at it from Pike Speak? They were looking, uh, looking at it from in town and then up Pike Speak and in Manitou Springs. Oh, and so, like the whole, so they, they went up Pike Speak? From different, from different vantage points. Line. People saw from different vantage points yeah. all over all yeah. over the area. There's a, there's a movie about that. There's a lot of movies about that. Oh, yeah. There's, there's I know. A, there's a movie about that that I was involved with. Uh, it's called The Gods Among Us. Mm. Oh. A DVD? Uh, it's on the internet, but oh, wow. they changed the website because the original name had the word God in it. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, they kind of freaked mm. out and said, well, right. you know, that's going to turn. Maybe it's a dog. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, Glenn. That's my wife, Marianne. Oh, Marianne's oh. Glenn Ryan. Tes she's a Tesla expert. <laughs> I remember you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, she made this movie uh, of the scientific basis for the fact that ETs live in higher dimensional realities and that the human consciousness can achieve higher like the Venusians connect to higher dimensional realities. Right, interdimensional. And that's what Steve Greer talks about all the time, the CE5. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Steve Greer. First he contact. Made, uh, uh, contact in the desert. Uh, yeah, something like that, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah. He interviewed uh, some famous astrophysicists from Harvard and Dean Raven and Beverly Rubick and not Don, not Donald Menzel. Well he's dead, but and myself. <laughs> Cool. And so that's cool. So they, they changed the name, and the website is etcontact.com. Oh, wow. Et contact. Excellent. Et contact. Excellent. Dot com. Well, it's still called the Gods Among Us, but that's not the URL. Well, part of it, I'm going to look for that when I go back up there. Part of the awakening is, is, is moving up in you know, dimensional, too. And our whole vibrational state of being, yeah. which is controlled by our thoughts, apparently. Yeah. Well, that makes a lot of sense. I'm an alien. When I came into this world, <laughs> it didn't seem familiar. Did you have, did, did I was you used to something much more advanced. And that's the way it felt, always. Well, now it it's catching like up to what know, it should maybe be. Maybe you didn't have to do past life regression, but have you No, I never have, and I've been dying to. Yeah. yeah. Have you tried it? You don't need no, it. But you know some people. No, yeah. you don't. You, you got that right, yeah. Need it. Oh, man. <laughs> no, because, no, seriously, I mean, there's, there's like. Little, no, I, I, I want to do that. Little Me too. I have to do that. That I know, yeah. and it's yeah. like, okay, I'd like to figure this out. Marianne, my wife, came from a planet, a crystal planet, a crystal palace. It was like a planet, and the planet was like a giant crystal, and all the dwellings were like crystals, like living inside giant crystals. Why'd you leave? Because she had to, she had to marry me. That's why she had to meet and marry me. And that's why she left. You like challenges, right? You like challenges. <laughs> like me. <laughs> oh yeah. But hey, you know, without hardship, you know, you wouldn't have any spiritual evolution. You know, if you skate through an easy life, what are you going to learn? I bet if we asked everybody at the table that they probably thought this was their calling. Bingo. And, and you wonder why. Bingo. You wonder why. You have this uh, incredible uh, curiosity. Everything in my life has led me to what I'm doing. It's, it's bizarre. Well, I it's know, like it was meant to be. I know that. I know that why, I, why I'm here is that, is that you know, instinctually I have to figure out what the hell I'm supposed to be to make in the next 20 years. And that's that was me until I reached age 25. You know, and I, yeah. I don't. I'm not a scientist. I'm not an engineer. You know. Well, you could be. If you have the desire, that's all it takes. Well, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm so impressed with, with everybody, you know, and their knowledge and their, you know, and their, their background and all of that. Um, um, so, 
but it's just, it's just, you know, it's the, it's just the gut feeling. Okay, I'm, I'm here for, for a reason. It's, it's just time to figure it out. And would you think you uh, will? Try, and you will. To, uh, do past life regression? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm definitely, I'm definitely here for some more. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. But you Me too. Be careful. Yeah. That's what the source you go to. That's it. You know. And therein lies the rub. Yeah. 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 Did you get your guitar yet? <laughs> Are we ready for a musical interview? <laughs> <interview? laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty soon, as soon as I finish this big plate of food. Well, maybe I'll you know, just trot up there and grab it. Yeah, let's play some tunes, man. We're waiting to hold you to play with you. I don't know. Oh. We usually, usually used to sit up in the corner when we had these conferences for several years at Embassy Suites. Because it was a big. Everything was not as formal as this. I'm a professional jazz musician. Oh, you're really? Oh, wow. Yeah. What do you cool. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a professional musician, too. Clarinet. Awesome. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Wow. Oh, classical music and jazz. I got to get I got to get more more rage. He plays <laughs> keyboards, too, doesn't he? God. I, 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 play, I play just, keyboards too. I didn't even, wow, I didn't I even bring an axe this time. I was thinking, so cool. I don't need to bring an axe. I find that most of my scientists and programming buddies are musicians. A lot of them are musicians too. Like maybe 75% to 80% of them. There's something, some part of brain. Maybe it's a left brain thing. I have no idea. That's, I find it very interesting. But that is true. Wow. Oh, cool. Hey, honey. Honey, honey, do you have a couple of my cards with you? I left mine all upstairs. Cool, thanks, man. In action. No, 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 stay put. I want to make you get up. You gonna get your cards too? No, I'm gonna get his cards. No, no. I have the applied electric, not applied electric, but it's the Spintronics cards on the table, and then some entertainer cards. That. No, uh, yeah, um, the entertainer. You got the entertainer ones? Straight up sum up this year. Excuse me, I started playing a lot of uh, private parties and well, gigs. And this stuff. is the only one I have left. Yeah, that's fine. This one's fine. Oh, cool. And I didn't bring any more of the entertainer ones with me because I, you know, I didn't think. <laughs> oh, you're okay. You do healing. I know. <laughs> well, you know me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's more important. Right now. Especially, it's just all kind of incredible things are happening. <laughs> really, it's going to be fun. Really, really good stuff. What do you think of this setup? Um, That's a thing. How about? But I can uh, I can let you know. Know. Sounds like a plan. All right. I will be back. Soon. All right, back. We'll have guitar. We'll I have travel. Uh, like, like the musical version of Paul. <laughs> I can take something, hold it. I'll get a read. I uh, can play it. See, like picture of the you know, you were, talking, you were talking about the electric energy weapons. I was looking on Facebook, and they sh they're showing all these neighborhoods. They're just the homes are destroyed. All the grass and trees wait, wait, are, where's, not, where's are intact, are, are untouched. Yeah. You're, you're talking about oh, California, no. Northern California. In America? Yeah. Is this in America? Pictures on Facebook. Multiple things. And then you're saying directed so energy so weapons. Mm -hmm. Is this in America or all over? Northern California. Yeah. I think this, this so was in Greece. Greece. I'm in, in Greece? <laughs> oh. so I had my wings. Wow. When I looked at Actually, that. Actually, Katarina, she's in Greece too. It immediately. She's not making it. She has white wings with paper. Did you see it's it? Who, it's who, in the Bible. Mm. Oh. Wow, the book of Revelations. Wow. wow. I do read with her. The phrase goes something like they are commanded not to hurt the grass or the trees. White. But only the men that don't have the seal of God in their forehead. Oh my. Whoops. That's how it reads. That's terrifying. So immediately, I was told about this about 15 minutes ago. Mm, that long? Uh, yeah. Smoky, you know the smoke uh, band mentioned this verse, this prophecy that's going to manifest this. And then we had 9 11. And then now I see it. Yeah. Yeah. I was in Holland. I did the Globe of BDM 
five years, uh, six years ago. Oh. Where I was there. And, um, Appalachian? Dr. Judy Wood had a presentation on directed energy weapons oh. responsible for 9-11. Like I know about the Russian um, Podkletnov uh, gravity beam device. That's simply a Van de Graaff with a, a horizontal glass tube on it. Shoots out a beam that resembles a laser beam, but it's just a force beam. You punch holes in concrete walls a mile away. And there's no attenuation with distance. Oh, which ones are there? Of course, this goes right over the horizon. I'm thinking that's very much like what a scalar wave beam would be like. And normal scalar wave beam would be produced by something as simple as a cylindrical ferrite core wound with bifilar or caduceus windings and pulsed with square waves. What comes out is a laser-like beam of energy that's basically a scalar wave. And depending on modulation, that wave will go anywhere from way below the speed of light to almost instantaneous velocity. And that's what Tom Bearden talked about. And then, of course, if you have scalar wave one, scalar wave two, where they intersect, you get normal EM energy. So you get a bottle of energy, basically. And that can be what I was trying to get to my talk, but I didn't have enough time. That can be turned into a, a hemispherical shell to protect the city. But unlike the, uh, the deflector shield, it will destroy anything that touches, will get zapped like a bug running into one of those bug zappers. It'll just be vaporized. Yeah. And, yeah, and that's a Tesla shield. That's exactly right. Yeah. Okay, so they're showing these pictures on Facebook. And I think they were from Greece. Mm. Greece. I'll have to look that up. Look this street. They have all these cars virtually in cinema. And some of the metal What we need to do tonight. That's what Dr. Judy Wood described in her report on 9-11. But here's the thing. Around these cars, everything was untouched. Mm -hmm. That's, a, that's what she described. That's what she described. Those buildings shouldn't have pulverized like that. They shouldn't have powdered. And I saw them powder as they went down. As if they were pulverized by a giant hammer or something. Very strange. I, re I remember, I remember the feeling of disbelief in my gut when I saw that. It's like obey those feelings; they'll never not, lie to you. It's not, it, it doesn't collapse that way. Nothing, no, nothing would collapse. Of course not. Collapse. Of and, course not. And then later, never. I find out they were designed to withstand a, 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 that exact thing. Bingo. And they would have still been standing. Bingo. Yeah. 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 That's what I'm talking about. So, yeah, I mean, well, and then, you know, it goes on and on and on. That's just one thing out of 9-11. Mm. It's just muck, you know, but, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, the rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. when it got real super deep. Well, to me, it was building something. Because that didn't get hit. Huh? Right. That's no. It's just small debris. Right. Exactly. Bingo. Yeah. 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 I saw the whole thing. I saw the whole thing from start to finish. It's like, why did Building 7 collapse? It just sank into itself, well, like it was then, a controlled, there was a, there was a controlled demolition. There was an announcement that, yeah. sa that says we, pull, we pulled it. There was How a, can a, you pull a building? What right. the hell? Is it unless it's pre wire with explosives? They knew in the 1970s about 9 11. They had. I was in New York. Mm. That weekend, I came home the day before, and it came back to the day before. Jet that weekend, Do you think no they security. Knew that one, was built? just one jet engine. What? That was good. The world had to think all. When it was built? When it was built, that that was going to happen. And it was just one jet engine sitting on. That sounds they not like the passengers said, more like a cruise missile. If it, would, if it was a, oh my God! If it was a Masonic ritual, right. or, or, you know, then the question ritual. becomes, right. where did that cruise missile come from? Right. They, 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 they Who fired it and why? Who, what, where, why, and how? You know. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! Unbelievable. They know. That's our world. That's our crazy world. Right.
Right. Did you know? Did you know that Nixon knew that Trump was going to become president? Nixon. Nixon. Nixon and Trump were buddies. I had no idea. Oh yeah. Well, I was told that Bush yeah. asked Trump to be president. The president was never mind, but he. No, Nixon. Nixon. All right. So you you got now to be president. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had to plug into to yours. Oh no! It's only got one input. <laughs> it's uh, so small. It's, it's so small. It's only got one input. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you telling me you didn't bring any kind of ant to play through? No, because oh my I, God. I don't have any kind of a practice hammer or anything like that. Again. Oh no! Like what kind of musician are you? <laughs> <laughs> and I spent 70 bucks in baggage. No way! Well, I thought it was going to be worth it because. Well, here, you plug in first and you plug in first. We'll take turns. You call we'll it. take turns. Well, Obama, the second term, he was oh, I That's the only way to do it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, his guitar, guitar, guitar center's closed yeah, tonight for the night. <laughs> I had an eight-piece moment. great oh, guitar center. Okay. Every time we come okay. to Albuquerque, so, we go to Guitar was, Center was, over on Menol. Okay. And all the lights and everything were out. Menol Boulevard. And right across the street, diagonally across the street, there's big Barnes & Noble, which I love also. It wasn't my voice. It's the last real bookstore, last bookstore. There's no more Borders. Oh, and Borders Bookstore, speaking of Borders Bookstore, that's the only place I've found in the public, uh, John Searle, the, the uh, anti-gravity the dream made reality, and it had in paperback. Really? Yeah, and that's where I got my paperback copy back in 2001. Not an esoteric bookstore. Borders bookstore, national chain. Borders. Now, I have a Facebook friend, William William Stillings. He's my age. He remembers the John Searle films of the, the Sunday afternoon flight demos because he's that age. You know, the younger people don't remember because they, they weren't around for the broadcasts. He remembers them. Now, he said his father was ex-military uh, intelligence, was military intelligence. They paid him to go to all the borders all over the United States and buy up all the copies so there would be none in circulation. Is that the dirtiest thing you ever heard or what? It's like they're trying to continue the embargo on information on Searle in this country, the, the early 21st century. With the video I have those. And in fact, I include Fuzzum. Well, I didn't buy the rights to them, but I still include Fuzzum in my Beamship video kits. Because I think it's important. But look, humans are not an earthling. This is just I mean, over 2013. Would leave these little tell me what happened. I was at the global beach. Yeah, we were here. Four or five minutes. I never had anything. I never had anything like that. But I know that, uh, what's her name? Uh, who's the girl? Um, Linda Moulton House. She lives here in town. She said she's had the visits and they broke into her uh, place and they would leave, do things like leave books on the floor. Certain books on the floor. We had a book on the floor. And that book, she said to me, there's a number of people we, here. We came back from Jerome. And they're all from Oklahoma. And I took a day. And I said to her, well, she's in Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. Prescott? Meaning, Prescott. The that's where we might have our facility when we get me, fully funded. Well, Either that, that or, yeah. So I'm hoping it's Reno up. instead. Um, because also it's a tax-free state. I think there is a UFO base. I, I believe there's a UFO base in Boynton Canyon. I don't know how I know, but underground, of course. Of course. Perfect hiding place. Also underwater. We see that time and time again. Well, you know the resort in New Mexico. I never heard of it. Oh, Sedona. I love Sedona. I was there in 92. No way. Beautiful. That's what light work is, too. Yeah. Sounds ominous. Right. That's like north of here, Archuleta Mesa. Uh -huh. And I found that UFO site. I got that book, that uh, Bill Herman book, um, UFO Crash at Aztec. You know, that happened 70 years ago. And I found the site, uh, uh, northeast of Aztec in Hart Canyon. That uh, Mesa so, so Plateau, just uh, above the pumping station in El Paso, uh, 
Right. Natural gas pumping station. Now, Les and I, I met I found that December. Mesa, mm -hmm. and everything okay. went right there where the 100-foot UFO and pancakes, and almost intact, mm -hmm. and uh, I went in November. it was just like it was November. in the book. December. Exactly. It was a lecture. I was looking around for evidence, because he had found, you know, stuff like a welding, well, a TIG welding meter, you know, a meter, in other words, a gauge for a welding apparatus. It's like, what would they be doing with the welding apparatus on top of a mesa like, in okay, the desert? I get close, but I'm like, in a, in a close, high, dry, I'm rocky canyon. It's very high, very dry. Inside. Well, not that high. Maybe about uh, 50 feet above the road. Behind and but uh, I drove through Hard Canyon in a rental car twice. Once in 91. Or, uh, was it 91 or 90? I forget. There's, no, once in 91 and again in 92 because I went back for a follow-up uh, investigation. But uh, we filmed what we were, you know, seeing on Super 8. And uh, it's just another example of a, a cover-up of a crash of alien uh, technology. Looking at the back of And of course, there, there were alien occupants. They were all dead. Oh, and the center Okay. Why do they always choose the Southwest? Well, <laughs> probably because they... <laughs> well, uh, there was Spitzberg in Norway. Destiny. Yeah. Uh, and there was also Shag Harbor. Um, so well, it wasn't just the Southwest, but what they had in the Southwest was a lot that would be interesting to someone from another planet. Probably one of the only few places in the world that would be interesting to him. Since 1945. Oh yeah, obviously Alamogordo. So that coincides with the modern UFO era, coincides exactly with the atomic age. Of course. And between 1947, between 47 and 1952, there were more UFOs and green fireballs sighted in New Mexico than any place else on the planet. And you know what? And you know what happened in 1952? Right. So. They had the uh, Washington invasion, two separate uh, weekends in a row. Then, in November 1st, 1952, we had the first thermonuclear detonation at the Pacific Proving Grounds in Bikini Atoll. And uh, the uh, Kwajalein Islands and everything. Now, a hydrogen weapon, hydrogen bomb, there's no theoretical limit to its power. It's the only third, thing third, third, that can destroy three, life, the, the entire world, together. all life said, on Earth, if unrestrainedly used or used at all. There's a reason why nuclear weaponry okay. hasn't been used so since 1945. About, about watching a movie? Against him. Another a nation. Or a, another nation against us. It was too and frightening. We, you know, from, you know like I said, the library, that, we came back and we started moving. No, what? And it I said, you know, I said, I was open to, you know, see other guy guy pattern, who wrote a uh, book see where it goes, and if it should go more, I'm open to it, I don't know, come come back it doesn't have to be too, it was like the lock was a show, it does go another way, it was, yeah. 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 was like, his spirit was right with me, the rest of the country. Yeah, the demon woman so before me. <laughs> he was like, I'm not out there, You're I'm under surveillance blah, 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 yeah. of the national, by the national changed. security state. Yeah. But I had the opposition of his mother. We've been following. Yeah. We lived in Sudan. We were following this world. That won't matter. She had six seconds. Oh, yeah. He, 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 he broke the demon with his mother. He broke the demon with his mother. The demon was his ex-girlfriend. His ex-girlfriend. Yeah, nine months. Oh, well, his mother. Well, I had a demon. So they left the Sardonia Mars. Look at her watch, she said, she's crazy, yeah. she's yeah. she was, well, other well, guys, they, they, they weren't as long as her. Right. And she, they, she, they, they would take her parts, they wouldn't return, they would just take her uniform. When John Searle was at, uh, like this, mm -hmm. sort of thing. And one time, back then, one time, um, they, it was they actually took out, they didn't pay, and mm -hmm. they did George Adams, they broke up this October, and he had it open to a second page, right, two months later, mid-October, mid-December, two months after, and that's when I got stuck, and then I got stuck. Oh, interesting. And I was so they leave these comments. Yeah. Close to it's like, we know, you know, know, you know, we know that you know, and we know, and you know, that we know that you know. 37, 26, and 20. And, um, I've got my eye Katrina on you. Katrina was first year of college. It's like, come Katrina on, guys. 12, you know, Katrina give it up already. January. You know, the national so, security state is being deconstructed as we speak, uh, and we're in disclosure. End of story. Because her father... She's going to be, he's going to be her life. I don't know what this is.
So you're gonna play? I don't know. <laughs> oh man. I thought we were both going to uh, plug in. Yeah, well I was hoping you had maybe an acoustic guitar like the other guy. I can't remember his name. <laughs> oh no, like last year. The Embassy Suites. Oh my god. Well, we'll open it up. We'll see, yeah, see so what you got. Let's go down the pike. Yeah, going sure. Down. Yeah, break it, break it out. So they charge you 70 bucks? Everybody but me. And it's like, oh, they have access. Yeah. Yeah, Fender Jack. Yeah, 35 bucks <coughs> for my second bag. My second bag. I'm dealing with port, port order. Uh, what what airline? airline? So I know to award it. <laughs> you <laughs> it. Of course. Stay yeah, stay away. Stay away from their food. No, I would. Huh. Plastic food. But, but you know, but, but here you are, here you are with your. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Gave us your, pretzels. You have what? Your, your uh, my two flights. Right. Because I had, then, uh, I had two layovers. Yeah. Here, oh, know, just pretzels. <laughs> yeah. They try to take me out. Flying sucks now. Man, back, <laughs> yeah, in, back in the late 60s and 70s, flying, flying was great. Like flying was fun. Yeah, the yeah, food was good. This well, that way. They had plenty of leg room. Didn't have to wake anybody up to go to the bathroom. Flying was great. And now it sucks. And the the radiation scanners and things do real damage. Oh, they really hurt Marianne and made my... Stop I had trying. having problems with the pitch <laughs> of my neck. When I, last time I went through the scanner at Albuquerque, yeah. um, on the way back, my left arm became dead. I had no strength in my left arm at all. My left arm was, my, my left arm was ripped. I killed my left arm. It took months and months to get any strength back in my left arm. It was horrible. And it was really frightening because I need my left arm and my left hand to play. Sure. I you know, make some extra money. You know? Oh my gosh. Horrible. How long did that last? It's still happening. I, my left arm is still weak. I mean, look. Look at this. Look at the difference. This is my right arm. This is ever since... Wait, say that again. 2015. Yeah. This is my right arm. This is my left arm. Oh, picture it. Okay. Picture yourself with the gold cord. Is this, is this, is this like just... They're no longer symmetrical. This arm is so weak, I can't even hardly curl three pounds. And I can curl, you know, 40 pounds with this arm. And you don't need that happening. It's, it's horrible. Is to grab the no. is, 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 is it just me? Is it freezing down here? It is freezing. It's freezing in the whole freaking hotel. Yeah, everybody, I heard that from somebody else. It's freezing in the whole hotel. Oh, no. Life is love. Coming down with the white light cold light. Well, I don't think they need heat in the summertime, just not so much AC. <laughs> just give me room temperature and I'll be happy. Also, we had no microwave. Microwave, nice yeah. fridge, you know. And you had shuttle service to the airport. A wet bar. Yeah, so, so, yeah. 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 I don't know what made them choose this, uh, this place, but. Well, there are plenty of way cheaper places we stayed in that weren't so nice in Albuquerque over the years, I'll tell you. Well, actually, we found a nice one right across the street. Um, we stayed Monday and Tuesday night at the Red Roof. Diagonally really, across from here. It's not clear. And um, we're going to stay there. I have to go play. Uh, what is 